Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for this webinar, Sales Strategies for Small Businesses. I'm your moderator, Renee Goodenough from the New York Small Business Development Center. Today's host is the Pace Small Business Development Center. Pace is part of the New York SBDC's network of 22 campus-based centers and outreach offices across New York State. The New York SBDC is a U.S. Small Business Administration resource partner. Our free resources are made possible by funding from the SBA, New York State, and our host campuses. Joining us to lead things off and introduce our presenter is PACE SBDC Director, Andrew Flynn. Andrew, I'll turn things over to you. Great, thanks so much, Renee. Uh, can you both hear me okay? Super, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Uh, looking forward to having my uh, colleague, Harvey Markovitz, back um, to uh, go through some sales strategies for small businesses. So, uh, Harvey, I'll introduce you in a moment. Um, uh, and I just wanted to just touch briefly on kind of who we are, what we do, and hopefully how we can help you all in terms of your small business ventures. So as Renee mentioned, uh, our center is based out of Pace University here in Lower Manhattan. And uh, we uh, work with both existing small business owners as well as aspiring entrepreneurs, helping them with a wide range of issue areas. We provide one-on-one -on -one business advisory services. We are staffed by a team of full-time and terrific business advisors uh, who day in and day out are working with entrepreneurs uh, through a wide range of issue areas. Obviously, uh, marketing and sales certainly among those topics, but also looking at access to finance, uh, procurement opportunities, and you know, various operational uh, issues, uh, both related to operating business as well as launching a new venture. So uh, if you are interested in working with one of our business advisors, if you're not already, uh, I will put in uh, our email address into the chat and you're certainly welcome to contact us. We look forward to working with you. All of our services are offered at no cost. Um, we are funded by an array of grant sources, both from the federal and state governments, as well as from our host institutions. So we certainly encourage you to take advantage of our services. Um, in addition to the one-on-one -on -one business advisory work, we do host a wide range of small business webinars. Again, we're uh, delighted to have uh, Professor Markovitz back with us today. Uh, both our center, as well as my colleagues throughout the state, um, host a, uh, topics on a wide range of, of issue areas. Again, all of these sessions are available to you at no cost, and I certainly encourage you to take advantage of them and attend them at your convenience. Uh, as Renee had mentioned, many of them are, in fact, recorded, so you can have them at your uh, leisure if you want to catch up with certain topics uh, off, off uh, camera as well. Um, so I will put that uh, link in the chat as well. Um, and finally, we have some you know, various resources that exist on our website, both marketing and sales oriented. Um, you know, if there are additional topics you want to dive more deeply into in terms of working with a business advisor on uh, building or expanding your website, uh, kind of looking at, uh, you know, upgrading or extending some of your sales strategies, social media presence, and different operating uh, opportunities. So I'll put a link uh, in the chat there as well. And then finally, uh, not related to today's topics necessarily, but for those of you that have been operating uh, your business through this very challenging time post-COVID, uh, there are, as you hopefully know at this point, there are a wide range of financial programs that are in place um, to help businesses through this very difficult time and transition and hopefully get to a better position uh, in terms of operating your business, both grant, loan, uh, grant programs, uh, low interest loan programs and other resources that exist and I will add that uh, to the chat as well. So if any of these strike a chord, uh, please do uh, click through and learn more and uh, again uh, look forward to working with you all on a one-on-one -on -one basis to help you build your business and grow your business here in New York. So with that I will turn the floor over to my colleague Harvey Markovitz, a professor at the Lubin School of Business here at Pace University. Professor Markowitz, the table is all yours. Thank you, Andrew. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sales Strategies for Small Business. I'm a professor of marketing and sales at Pace University, the Lubman School of Business. And I teach my students how to professionally sell and how to market and how to network. So when Andrew asked me to participate in this strategy today, I was all excited because I used to also do consulting to small businesses. Um, so. Here we go. Should you have any questions at all as we're going through the presentation, please put your questions in the chat box and uh, we'll deal with the questions as appropriately we can. Uh, so here's the key. We're going to be talking about networking. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, sales and, and making original contact with targets. 
those people that you want to deal with and you want to have a relationship with. Okay. So what you have to clearly understand is that networking and sales is a mindset. It's a certain way of looking at how you conduct business and how you work. That becomes a critical piece. So where do you go to meet prospects? That's our first question. How do I find someone who can be a candidate for my business? So I've listed here some of these business organizations that I've had experience with, and you can go to them and have get involved with the networking sessions. You have the BNI, Mastermind Groups, LATIP, Women in Business Networking Chamber of Commerce, Local Merchant Associations, Rotary, Kiwanis, and Optimist Group. These are all opportunities for you to do business with, with um, other businesses in your trading area. Uh, and there's a way of doing it. Generally speaking, when you go to these business organizations, you are faced with one your first challenge. How do we introduce myself? So what happens is that you're sitting around a table, you have on a name tag that identifies you and your business, and then you're called upon to introduce yourself. Well, what do you say when you get up there to talk? How do you introduce yourself? Well, the first thing you have to do is to develop a lemonade statement about your business. A lemonade statement. What? A lemonade statement. What does that mean? It means you have to demonstrate the value to your network relationships as to why they should want to engage with you. That becomes our first critical question. Lemonade. There it is. So you've got to dis you've got to uh, pretend that that picture of lemonade is your business. How do you describe that to your target market? That's your first challenge. So where do you start? First, you have to define what your uniqueness is. You have a business that is unique. No one else is like you. It's run by you. It might be similar to another business, but it's not like you. It's a unique business. You've got to define what that is. And your business should be able to solve a problem. What you've got to demonstrate in your lemonade statement is what problems will you solve and how you will solve them. And what's in it for your target market to listen to what you have to say? W-I-I-F-M is what everyone is concerned with, including yourself. What's in it for me to listen to the other guy? You have to summarize it all into a lemonade statement. And then when you do, you're able to make an introduction. So here are some examples. You don't want to describe lemonade as a drink of fresh squeezed lemon with ice, water, and sugar. In other words, you don't want to say you're a manufacturing facility with 500 people working for you, or you are a, an accountant with uh, different accountants in specialty areas. That's not what you want to talk about, okay? What's in it for me, the prospect, W-I-I-F-M? What do they want to hear you say? That becomes the issue. So what is lemonade? Describe it in the terms that the networking prospect wants to hear. Describe it in terms of what the networking prospect wants to hear. What's in it for me, for me to do business with you? That becomes the issue. Isn't this what Lemonade does? It quenches my thirst. It quenches my thirst. So we've just described what Lemonade is. It quenches my thirst. Can you describe your business in such terms? That's what you have to focus on. So the lemonade statement. How do we describe this? Describe yourself in simple terms like lemonade. 10 words or less, best, or a simple short statement of end results on how you can solve problems. That's what they're looking for. Here are some examples. Harvey Markovitz. So now we're at a networking group for BNI, for example. I would get up and I'd say Harvey Markovitz, and now everyone knows my name. Markovitz is the name, and marketing is a game. People will now know that I'm in the marketing business, but what do I do? I help companies improve profitability one day at a time. That's it. That's me. That's what I do. That's my lemonade statement. Create a 20-second infomercial using your unique selling proposition, your USP, and use it as a networking event or on the elevator if you meet somebody. Does the opener have the other person say, 
apart. Tell me more about how you can do that. Tell me more about how you can do that. And we'll show you how you deal with that question. Am I specific enough about my uniqueness? Does it show that I enjoy what I'm doing? What benefits do I offer? What makes me unique? Transcribe your lemonade statement to fit on your business card. So your business card should not have Harvey Markovitz, Professor of Pace University. It should have Harvey Markovitz, Professor of Pace University, but also helping companies improve profitability one day at a time. Now you know what I could do for you. Now you know what I could do for you. So that's the lemonade statement. Here's some other examples. If you're a company like UPS, we help companies solve international shipping challenges. If you're a trainer of, of salespeople, we train salespeople and students to be more effective in converting LinkedIn and telemarketing leads to customers. Markovitz is a name. Marketing is a game helping companies improve profitability one day at a time. A statement of your company's USP, your unique selling proposition, our lemonade statement, we sell lemonade to quench thirst. So what you're doing is you're positioning yourself and you're creating your own brand. That's your objective. Your brand is who you are and what people think about you when they hear your name. It's not how you look at yourself. It's how others look at you. It's painting a picture of who you are. You're developing a positioning statement that expresses how you would like to be perceived. Does your appearance communicate the message you want to convey? These are all important considerations. Okay. So now you've got your lemonade statement. What you want to do is now get on a first name basis in a one to one meeting. How do you do that? So you make your lemonade statement, you get, then you get on a first name basis. Here's how you do that. Markovitz is the name, marketing is the game, helping companies improve profitability one day at a time. Mr. Smith. Because you see the guy's badge says William Smith on it. You don't say Bill. You don't say William. You say Mr. Smith. Call me Harv. May I call you William? Give the other guy permission to call you by your first name. And then ask the other guy for permission to call him by his first name. Be respectful. Now Mr. Smith asks you, how can you help me? Well, let me see what you can do for me. Now, imagine the scenario. You are standing around in a networking group. You're there to get leads for your business. Other people are there to get leads for their business. Everybody is multitasking. Everybody is involved with some kind of other engagement. You're faced with a real challenge. I don't have his attention. He's asking me a good question. How can you help me? Or let me see what you can do for me. Are you going to do it right there? No, you don't want to do it right there. What do you want to do? You want to set a meeting sometime later, later this afternoon, tomorrow, next week, whenever fits your calendar and his calendar, where you can have his attention for 10 minutes. That's all you need. So here's how you respond to that. You don't want to present now. You want to set a meeting when you'll have Mr. Smith's attention. So here's how you do it. The question is, how can you help me? You say, would you like to see how? How is your office on Tuesday at 3 or is Wednesday at 4 better? And you smile. Well, most of us carry around our own pocket calendar or we carry around our cell phones and our cell phones have our calendars on it and I th most of us also control our own calendar we can be able to set a meeting right there so Mr. Smith can take a look at his calendar see when he's available three o'clock or four o'clock on Tuesday or Wednesday and you have a meeting that's set 
now you'll have his full attention. Now you'll have his full attention. So that's what you do. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. Take time now to prepare your own USP, your own lemonade statement. Okay, look at your own business, look at yourself. Define what your uniqueness is and take time to do that. And follow the above rules that we just talked about and put them in the chat box. Okay, look at your experience and look at your training. Tell us what you are trained to do and how well you do it. That becomes the important thing to put on for your, your lemonade statement and make it so it's a what's in it for me statement that the other person knows who you are. Okay, take 10 minutes now to do, well, take two minutes now. Let's do this over two minutes now. Take two minutes now, rush into this, and then we'll go, we'll see what we have in the chat box. We're not going to go around the room. We'll see what we have in the chat box. Jamie says, I'm a fashion designer changing the world one garment at a time. <laughs> I like that, Jamie. Thank you. Well, the Corey question, says, I, oops, go right, ahead. the question I would ask for Jamie is, how would you help me with my problems? I am a retailer I that you want to get as a client. How would you help me with my problems? So that's got to be in your lemonade statement. It's not, it's not a slogan to get business, it's not an advertising clip, it's a white matter of stating that you can solve a problem. What is the problem that you can solve? We have the Spiced Violet, it's a handcrafted small batch spice blend company that offers a curated culinary experience to elevate every dish. And we are about at our two minutes. Okay, so how can that help? How can how can you, who are you targeting and how can that help them? We have some other good ones that just rolled in. The Splendor in b, b is your home away from home in downtown Norwich. Lisa, helping retail companies buy products from around the world seamlessly from beginning to end. Okay. Raul, our studio T. Graphic design and multimedia services. Lorna just shared. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna, I hope I say this correctly, the name. As a Christoph, I am the owner and founder of ESA Christoph Spa Theater. I'm a licensed Esthetician and specialize in acne and skin care conditions. I help people fight wrinkles. Visit my spa and it will be your own private oasis. Let me okay, scroll down. Take that and put it into 10 words. Oh, we're all extended on, on theirs. Our Studio T unites compelling graphic design and engaging contents to create empowering visual solutions that help you be notable in your market today. Brianna, bringing you fantastical worlds in sustainably sourced books. We are a thrift store offering affordable shopping with a boutique experience. Should um, There's a question that came in. Should you include your name and the company no. name? No, not necessary. Okay. You're going to stay... And... You're gonna... You know, you're going to have that on your business card. You're going to say that in your introduction, what your name is. You want to just come up with a lemonade statement. Describe your business and how you can solve somebody else's problem. We had um, a question if this one was too long. I'm a nutritionist, well-being, and mental fitness coach, and I can support you increase your energy, improve your memory, and mental fitness. People I work with also benefit from improved relationships, both work and at home. See, that's more along the lines of an elevator pitch, discussing in detail what your product is, but you wanna get their attention. You're not gonna have their attention to go into the details of that. So how do you summarize it? What is the end result that you're gonna to bring to your customer? 
Thank you. We have a retail clothing and content creator offering organic and affordable clothing with a positive message and content. And unless I missed any, that was the last one. Let me just double check. Oh, we have one more from LJ. Your leaders are good at what they do. They've got the hard skills, yet they struggle to inspire and lead. Projects are failing and the work looks like it's getting done. What's the problem? Hard technical skills is not enough to guarantee success. We need 21, sorry, 21st century leadership skills and it's our job to develop your talent to lead with passion that inspires others. IN18 LLC, we provide team building, coaching, professional development and training, including golf. And then we had a follow-up for the nutritionist. She says, thank you. Should I focus more on the first sentence? And I'll reread that one so you know what I'm talking about. I'm a nutritionist, well-being and mental fitness coach, and I can support you increase your energy, improve your memory and mental fitness. So the Bottom line is the last part of that sentence. Can you repeat that, Renee? Absolutely. Improve your memory and mental fitness. There you go. There was energy in there too. I can support you, increase your energy, improve your memory and mental fitness. And you don't need to say, I can support you. You can say, you know, supporting to get you to the stage where you have this mental strength. Because that's the bottom line of what you're doing. You just cut to the chase. It's not easy. You've got to work on it. You know, the simple statement that I came up for my USP and I'm a professional doing this, took me about an hour to work on this, to get it down. And I started off the same way you're doing. I put down on paper my first guess as to what my uniqueness is. And then I worked on it. I worked on it until I perfected it until I felt comfortable making the statement that I did. And I got a lot of attention when I went to meetings. How can you help me with that, Art? Would you like to see how? Tuesday at three or Wednesday at four, your office. Get into their office, that way you can get a lay of their land. Understand what their challenges really are. Okay, that's good. Excellent start, excellent start. Let's move on. Sure, can I read Corey's? I might have missed it and I don't want to leave anyone out. Yeah. The Spice Violet is a handcrafted small batch spice blend company that offers a curated culinary experience to elevate every dish. Okay. And there, I think I got them all, Harvey. Okay, good. So these are the things, these are your initial statements that got to be worked on. Boil them down to 10 seconds or 10 words and make it such that they can fit on your business card. Because when people look through business cards, you go to a networking meeting and people look at business cards, they see your title, they see your company. They don't know really what you're all about. So you've got to tell them. And you tell them in, the, in your uniqueness with your lemonade statement on your business card, put it in place. And that's how you get next meetings and that's how you grow your business. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now here's a question. The whole idea of networking, whoops, let's back this up, slipped. The whole idea of networking is very simple, right? You go to network, but there are some of us who are introverts. Oh, I hate networking. I hate going to groups with a lot of people. I know I've got to do this in order to get business, but how do I do it? Let's watch a very short YouTube video on networking for introverts and see what happens. I know it's a little bit awkward, but it's absolutely worth it. You might meet someone who can help you directly, or you might meet someone who can connect you to someone in their network. So for example, I remember going to an event and meeting a podiatrist, and he was able to introduce me to the Australian editor of Harper's Bazaar. And I mean, that was so unexpected and cool. So I put together a bunch of tips of can things that I've Can you expand that box? Here you networking. Tip number one, introduce yourself. I know that seems super obvious, but it is a bit of a weird social situation. So if I walk into a room and there's a group of people, what I tend to do is walk up to them and just say, 
hi, do you mind if I join you? And of course they will welcome you. Be friendly, don't just get straight into business, ask how their day has been. And then that next question can be, so tell me what you do. And there you've introduced yourself and it's pretty easy going. On the flip side, if you're in a group of people and you see someone standing by themselves, then invite them into your group. That way you've done something really nice for them actually, because it's, you know, they've obviously experienced a bit of awkwardness. And secondly, you've met another person. Tip number two is short conversations. So nobody is going to think that you're rude at all for having a short conversation. I mean, don't be abrupt, but uh, look, you're, you're not there to lock in and become best friends and all that sort of stuff. That might happen in the future, but definitely at this event, you're there to make lots and lots of connections. So have like short, meaningful conversations and keep going. Tip number three, business cards. Don't forget to take your business cards with you. I've totally done this before. It's a huge pain in the butt. Also too, anyone whose business card you get, make sure you email them within 24 hours. This is for both of you. So for you, so you remember, you know, why you made that connection. Secondly, so you're still fresh in their mind. And thirdly, so that when you do inevitably lose their business card, you'll have their details logged somewhere. So look, I really hope that these tips have helped you and I would love to hear your tips as well. So please put them into the comments below so that I can learn from you. Hit me up on YouTube, just hit the subscribe. Okay, so one of the things that that we saw in this video is almost a taboo, particularly now during the COVID time. And that's actually extending your hand and shaking the other guy's hand. You don't want to do that because there are going to be a lot of people, especially now, who are going to be germaphobic. They don't want to touch anybody. You know, it's the elbow bump. Let's bump elbows. Okay. But then how do they get your message? Well, if you have a business card like this, and on the business card, it has your name, your title, but on the bottom, it has your unique selling proposition and you talk to them during the meeting. Well, that's your whole calling card. So now they know on one card who you are. And the way you introduce yourself is very simple. You say what you do, what your unique selling proposition is, and then you ask permission, you say, Mr. Smith, and as you're saying, Mr. Smith, you take your business card out of your pocket and you say, call me Harv, may I call you William? And as you're doing this, like that, just as simple as that, they're going to come by and they're going to take your card. So now they own your card, they have your card, you have the introduction. You've, you, you forgot about the whole situation of COVID, it's bypassed, and now you've exchanged information. If they extend their hand to you first and you don't feel uncomfortable taking it, then you take their you take their hand. But do not extend your hand to them first as a handshake. Have your business card ready to put in their hands. That's the best way of making an introduction. Okay. Okay. Now we've introduced ourselves. What's not what's next? Let's network. So how do we network? Um, Let's see if this works. We have a, I don't think it's going to work. We'll try it and see. Andrea Nierenberg is a friend of mine who's one of the uh, best networkers in the industry. And um, she has some things to say about networking, particularly networking in the, in the COVID period. Let's, effectively, what she's saying is this. Networking is part of my life, a mindset that what you really have to do is be a resource for other people. You've got to give them something to learn from that. Think now about the following. Who can you send a note or article to? Who can you send a note or article to? Who can you just say hello to? What did you learn from someone today that you can repeat and pass on? Who can you refer today? You can refer somebody to somebody else that would be really appreciated. Who can you do that? Who can you refer today? Give to others with a sheer passion of simply helping. Not to get anything in return, but just the sheer passion of helping them today. It doesn't take much to have a mindset. It's amazing how many opportunities will come back to you when you do this. Okay. Now, many of you or trying to find new accounts, new business opportunities, and you're dealing with other small business owners like yourself, and you're trying to get new business, 
and you make a phone call. You have a list. You've got a list from somebody, from someplace, of prospects to call, and you're going to call somebody for a meeting. You want to have a meeting to see whether or not they have any interest in your product or service. So it's a cold call. So in the cold call, the prospect has no idea who we are and doesn't want to talk to us, especially during the day. You don't want to talk to anybody who calls you, okay? And you're going to hang up on them. So you want to be able to get engaged in the conversation on a cold call. By the way, the phone is still the most powerful sales tool that salespeople have. It's to pick up the phone. You just have to know how to use it, okay? They don't want to talk to you. You're, again, that attention economy is still there. You got to get their attention. So how do you do that? Well, the number one rule is you don't want to sell anything in a cold call. You're not going to sell anything. You're not there to sell anything. What are you there to do on that cold call? What is the purpose of the cold call? Okay. In a cold call, we're trying to set a meeting and gain a commitment to the meeting by the prospect. And you want to do that in less than four minutes. That's the whole objective. You want to try to get a meeting gain commitment if you want to do that you don't want to sell anything you don't want to say i can do this for you or i can do that for you you use your lemonade statement the bottom line of your lemonade statement not the complete drawn out language of what you're all about it's not it's not about the water and about the lemon it's not about the sugar it's about how you can help me solve a problem that I have. That's what it's all about. So you got to put that into your lemonade statement. So now you're going to use a telephone to get and to qualify business leads. That's what your objective is. So the first thing you do is you rent a list of your targets. There are many companies, list companies, that offer lists that you can rent. You don't buy them, you rent them for one-time use only. You rent the list. And what's on that list? What's on that list, and this is a typical listing of what you would see. This happens to be a listing of pet stores in Pennsylvania, various cities in Pennsylvania. And what we have on here is we have a name, first name, we have a last name, we have the full contact name, we have the name of the company, we have the street address, we have the city address, we have the state, zip code, and we have a phone number. What more do you need? That's enough. Okay, these are all targets. They're targets for who? They're targets for a company that happened to be a pet food company trying to sell into the retail area. New business opportunities. And this is the lead that they work with. The sales development people working for that pet food company use the list like this to make phone calls to talk to the decision maker. Okay? And how... Does it work? I don't call it cold calling. I call it gold calling. Gold calling. You know why I call it gold calling? Because based upon the experience that I've had and based upon the experience that others have had and using this methodology, we're able to convert phone calls and convert that list into customer meetings and convert those customer meetings into doing business. So first you want to do is get the attention of the prospect. You want to make the entire conversation not about you, but about the prospect. You have open-ended questions. You're not selling. It's not an elevator pitch. Many of you in your lemonade statements created elevator pitches. You don't want to have an elevator pitch. You want to have a lemonade statement. You want to get the appointment for the next meeting. Then you'll have more attention and time to sell and give your elevator pitch. But not now. So the first step you do, you go through is you have an icebreaker. You've got to get the attention and let the prospect know your time frame for the call. Let them know it's not going to be a 10-minute phone call. What problem can you solve? What problem can you solve for the prospect that you're calling? And are you talking to the right person? Many times we don't talk to the right person, so you got to get on to the right person. And once you're talking to the right person, you have to focus the right person. You have to focus them on the problem and on your solution. You get their attention. 
you close for a meeting and then you confirm with an email. That's what the process is all about. You use a telephone to get in qualified business and you write a script. You don't do it off the top of your head, you write a script. But you have the script that's written, but you're not gonna read from the script that's there to remind you what you, have, what you have to say. Where do we start? So first we start with defining the uniqueness of our business, the lemonade statement. What problems will you solve and how will you solve them? Put it in a lemonade statement. And what's in it for your target to listen to what you have to say? And you're summarizing all of this in a lemonade statement. It's all about the lemonade state. So the purpose of the gold call is very simple. Prospect has no idea, doesn't want to talk. We don't want to sell on a cold call. We're trying to set a meeting and gain a commitment and do that in less than four minutes. That's what our objective is. This is the process. What you're seeing on the screen now is the process of the gold call. So we're describing our business, 10 words or less, make it simple, short statement of how you can solve problems. Like this, we help companies solve international shipping challenges, or we train salespeople and students to be more effective in converting LinkedIn and telemarketing leads to customers. It's a statement of your company's USP, and we define our lemonade by saying we sell lemonade to quench thirst. It's the attention challenge. People multitask all the time. There are so many things trying to vie for the attention of our target, including us. Our phone call interrupts the attention cycle on a busy day. We have to get the attention of the target. We have two to five seconds to make a great first impression. We don't want to overload the prospect with information and get into all the detail that some of you have in your first draft of lemonade statements. So we're gonna refine that. We don't wanna overload them with too much information. We must be careful of what we say and how we say it, no elevator pitch. We don't want to set off the prospect's trigger to hang up on us because we're asking for too much attention right now. There'll be a time for that. So we must be strategic. Some with a perceived problem is who we're calling. We have to know what we want. It can't be complicated. We have to keep it simple. It's a very simple process. Whoops. So why are we calling? Who are we calling? Some with a perceived problem. Why are we calling? To get an appointment. What, we, what do we want? To make an appointment and have it confirmed to talk again in person or on the phone. Can't be complicated, it's gotta be simple. We must know what we want the prospect to do when we pick up the phone and make that call. You're all familiar with this kind of a tray. Compartmentalized, things go into each individual box. Well, that's what our, that's what our gold call should look like. So the first thing is we want to clarify issues by asking questions. Be sure you're talking to the right person. How do we know that we're talking to the right person? What is the problem to be solved? We have to know what problem, we perceived problem we can solve. Is the person we're talking to the person responsible for solving that problem? And does the prospect have the authority to solve it? Clarify questions. Qualify, do not sell. This is a whole success. Control the meeting by asking questions, not by selling, not by complicating issues, or giving facts that are not needed at this point in your engagement. Let's identify the problem we can solve. When we get together, we'll be able to have time to tell them how we can solve the problem. No elevator pitch. So fashion your phone call like it were a text message or a Twitter message. We have limited time. Break it into bite-sized portions, like the serving tray. Don't give too much information. The USP works, but don't try to make a value statement 
or an elevator pitch to explain your USP. Just come up with a good, unique selling proposition. Remember, you're interrupting a person who's multitasking already and who is very busy. And this is the first meeting. Must be simple and to the point, and it's got to be done quickly. Keep it simple. Kiss. That's the objective. So when you're doing the goal call script, here's what it looks like. You start off with the icebreaker. Your next thing is the lemonade statement, what problems you can solve. Then you have a focus question to make certain you're getting the focus of the right person. The attention question, that you're gonna have their attention to what solution you can offer. And then the closing question, now, how does this all work? Let's see how it works. Okay, so the icebreaker starts a sales call with a question. What's the question? Ask for 10 seconds of their time. Just ask for 10 seconds of their time. What do you mean? Here's how you do it. Hello, Mr. Smith, this is Harvey Markovitz with Pace University Sales Center, and I'm hoping I might have 10 seconds to explain why I'm calling. The likelihood of someone hanging up on you when you make a statement like this is very, very small. So it's a good way to begin your conversation. Hello, Ms. Smith, this is Harvey Markovitz, Space University Sales Center, and I'm hoping, emphasis on the word hope, I'm hoping I might have 10 seconds to explain why I'm calling. Okay, that's our icebreaker. So now we broke the ice, we're getting involved. They know the time, they know the time frame. You've got to connect with a prospect and do it fast. You skip the sales pitch. You get the questions about the prospect. First, you define your USP and how to solve anticipated problems, and then you introduce yourself to get on a first name basis. You're giving the human touch. So what's the icebreaker again? The icebreaker is when you cold call, try not to sound like everyone else is calling. Don't get on the phone and say, hey, Harv, is this Harv? Don't ask for me by my first name. You want to talk to Mr. Markovitz, okay? You'll have about two seconds to get the prospect's attention. That's it. So when you're using the icebreaker, you do something like this. As I said before, hi, Ms. Smith, Harvey Markovitz, Pace University. I'm hoping I might have 10 seconds to explain why I'm calling. You get their focus and let them see how long it's going to take, 10 seconds. Okay, then we go to the lemonade statement. That's our next step. In the lemonade statement. You don't describe lemonade as a drink of fresh squeezed lemon, ice and water and sugar. What's in it for me, the prospect? That's what you want to be able to answer. What is lemonade? Describe it in terms that the prospect wants to hear. What's in it for me? It quenches my thirst. It's a hot summer day in New York. I want my thirst quenched. I want lemonade. You're selling something that's going to quench my thirst. I'll buy it from you. Okay. We help companies solve international shipping challenges. Works for UPS. You don't want to get involved and say we solve all of your problems, but we help companies solve international shipping challenges. That's what we do. We train salespeople and students to be more effective in converting LinkedIn and telemarketing leads to customers. We're solving a problem. You want to get more customers? You have LinkedIn relationships. Okay, you have a list of phone numbers to call, telemarketing leads. You want to convert those into customers? We'll show you how to do it. Okay, so that's exactly what we're doing. I apologize, there's a glitch on, on my computer in our system here for me to forward these slides to get going. So now you have a transition statement. So now we've got our, we have our 
laminate statement, and we want to get a transition to go from a laminate statement to a focus question. So the focus question directs the sales prospect's attention, disarms aggression and resistance to the call, and it keeps the conversation going. You ask it like this. Before I go any further, let me ask you this. You're asking a series of questions. You're asking a series of questions of your prospect to go to the next step. Or here's the reason for my call. And you make a statement. Here's the reason for my call. Okay, so that's a transition statement. Now, what's the focus question? The focus question is you want to make certain, whoops, I don't know where that came from. Okay, the focus question. You want to make sure you're talking to the right person. You connect the sales prospect to the need of the problem. So how do you do that? How do you do that? It's a very simple segue. When it comes to training students or new sales development reps, how much personal involvement do you have, Ms. Smith, with that part of your business? Now, if Ms. Smith says, that's my job, I'm the sales manager, then you know you're talking to the right person. If she says that's somebody else's job, then you know you're not talking to the right person and you want to move on to talk to that other person. Something like this, when it comes to renewing your employee health insurance policy, how much personal involvement do you have with that part of your business? When it comes to buying spices for your restaurant, when it comes to buying spices for your restaurant, how much personal involvement do you have with that? How much personal involvement do you have with getting your organization up to good, healthy positions? Okay, so now you know you're talking to the right person. How much personal focus do you give in solving problems with international shipping? So the focus question is connecting the prospect to the need. You have a need, now you're connecting the prospect to the need, you're talking to the right person. Okay? So now in the lemonade statement, you want to get personal. When you're done, you say, Miss Smith, call me hard, Mac, call you Barbara. Get on a first name basis, but do it with respect. Miss Smith. Use the last name. Or another transition, something like this. If the person we're talking with the first time is the right person, we keep going on with our presentation. If not, you've got to change the question. How do we change the question? You've got to get, get to the right person. So here, here's what it is. You pose the solution that you can offer. Pose the solution you can offer, and then you frame it into a question. Suppose I were in a position to train, to train your SDRs. Suppose I was in a position to train your SDRs, your sales development reps, at a much lower cost and get them up to speed quicker. Whose attention, Ms. Smith, would I need to get to see if there's a fit? If you're not the person, could you direct me to the person who is? Okay, very simple. So suppose I were in a position to train your SDRs to become more effective at a lower cost. Whose attention would I have to have? Could you direct me to that person who it is? Rather than just saying, tell me who I should talk to, who's the person I should talk to? Put it in this way, state the solution and you'll get to the right person. Now, I always like to do this. It's a tough question, but if you ask it the right way by saying, could you transfer me to that person, then you might have a better chance of making a connection. How do you do that? Well, the way you do that is most company phone directories or phone instruments have call wait, have a caller ID. So the caller ID would identify the fact that uh, Ms. Smith or Barbara Smith, who's working in our office complex, is calling me and I happen to be the director of operations. And I see her name coming up on the headset because she transferred a call to me. I'll pick up the phone and have an easier chance of conversation. So if you're calling for that decision maker, you can now begin your conversation all over again, and you know you're talking to the right person, and you got through. That's a very, that's a tough thing to do, but you can try it, 
because it might just work. Otherwise, you get the contact information of the person you want to talk to and begin the conversation over again. Okay. There we go. So assume the salesperson is not transferred and we're speaking to the decision maker. Let's go on in our conversation. We're talking to the decision maker. So now what do we say? We want to get the attention question. We want to get their attention. So we ask them for their attention. And here's how you do it. You negotiate for attention by making a reasonable request. You negotiate for attention by making a reasonable request. How do you do that? Close for attention with a loaded question. Ah, close for attention with a loaded question. If I can, will you? If I can solve your problem, will I get your attention? If I can solve your problem, will I get your attention? That's a loaded question. Or suppose I could demonstrate how we can save you money in international shipments or any other solution you might have. Would I get any of your attention? So state your conclusion that I can save money and ask, could I get your attention or I can show you how? Suppose I could demonstrate how to get your sales development reps to be more effective. Would I get any of your attention? And that works. So the attention question is, suppose that we have a simple way to train your sales student, your students or salespeople to convert leads to the customers. Would I get any of your attention? Now we're posing the solution to a challenge that the prospect has. Make it interesting. And that's how you're going to close. So now what's the trial close? The trial close is closing the deal. The prospect has now been qualified. They expressed an interest and indicated that he or she is ready to go to the next stage. And we're ready to ask the closing question, the trial close. What's the closing question? What's the scheduling question? Are you looking at your calendar? We ask them to look at their calendar. Very simple. Get them involved. Look at your calendar. So when they're looking at the calendar, what are we going to ask them to do next? Well, here are the different ways we can ask. When can I have more of your attention? Are you looking at your calendar? When can we meet? What day looks good for you? But give the prospect an alternative choice question with the answers that they can answer. When are you good? Monday at 2 or, or Tuesday at 3 or Wednesday at 4. Give them a choice. If they answer Tuesday at three, they're not wrong. If they answer Wednesday at four, they're not wrong. Okay, so it works. Either one of these could work. Now, the closing key on the, on the closing question is a confirmation. Ask for the email address. And you say something like this. You say, may I have your email address? I'll send you a meeting invite. Everyone uses meeting invites for the most part today. I won't call or confirm our meeting, but should you have a need to modify our meeting, you have my email address now. Just drop me a note. That way you get the email address and you confirm the meeting. And when you are selling, when you are selling, you have collateral material you want to send along, you can attach that to the meeting invite at all also. All right, so here's the basic summary of selling limited. And it covers 10 points in the step, in the process, the 10th point being the meeting. At the sales meeting, now you have the prospect's attention and you're able to present and you're able to sell. The golden rule of business networking is that it's not what you know, it's who you know. And it takes time and determination and patience to build your network. Any questions? Renee, I'll let you know the Absolutely. Thank you. We did get a few that came in. Um, I'm working on two screens here, so I apologize if I'm a little slow. Um, one that came up, Harvey, and I think you will be flattered. Are you available to be a mentor? <laughs> when would you like to talk about this? Next Tuesday at 3 or Wednesday at 4? Good question. Um, on a serious note, we have to talk about what you mean. Okay. 
um, it's the best option for them to reach out to Andrew and, and try to set that up. That's the best option. Reach out to Andrew. Andrew will set, Andrew will connect you with me and then we can go to the next step. Perfect. Samuel, that one was for you. Lots of thank yous rolling in. I don't want to not mention those. Um, we had a few questions about the recording and we will be sending that out shortly after. So you can keep an eye out for that. It will come from an email from GoToWebinar. Usually get it out um, by the next day, um, sometimes too. Um, there were a few examples of the unique selling, um, the UPS that you mentioned that were a little bit longer than 10 words. Is that okay? The USP, most of them were, were 10 words. They were around 10 words. So around 10 words is fine. You want to okay. make it so that you can put it on a business card. Okay. So would 15 be pushing it or do you think that could work? 15 is pushing. Okay. If you get the 15, try to cut back to 10. Okay, perfect. Um, we had a comment that they love the idea of the lemonade pitch. Um, they've heard of the elevator pitch before, but not the lemonade pitch. They like that it's mostly about communications and it's less salesy. That was a comment for you. Right, it's all about communication. You don't wanna sound like a pushy salesperson, particularly if you're in a networking group or particularly if you're gonna get them on the phone for the first conversation. Sounds good. This was amazing. My question is, is this a better lemonade statement? Would you like to analyze one? Sure, go ahead. Analyzation improvement and improvement of your role within the fashion industry. Say it again. Analyze, analyzation and improvement of your role within the fashion industry. That one was from Jamie. Let me see if I can find the original one. Fashion designer changing the world one garment at the time was Jamie's original one. Okay, so this is analyzation and improvement. And improvement, analyzation and improvement, go ahead. Of your role within the fashion industry. Well, instead of role, isn't position a better word than that? Of your position in the fashion industry? An analyzation and, and your role in the fashion industry. Jamie says yes, with an exclamation mark. Okay. Um, there was a request to go back to one of the slides with the BNI group stuff on it. Um, and I'll let folks know on the top of your GoToWebinar panel, um, you can screenshot if that's okay with Harvey. Sure. Although now that I've mentioned it, they know how to do it. So sorry, Harvey. I wish I could find that the screen you brought up before that brought up all the slides, but there we go. There it's that screen. Thank you. Okay, these are some good places. I I would pick up I used to pick up a lot of good business at BNI and also at Latip. Good opportunities. Very cool. And we have a question. Generally, from... generally organizations like BNA is exclusive. So if you're in a particular category of doing business, you'll be the only person in that category at the meeting. So you're not going to have any head-to-head -head competition. And there are enough there are enough of the organization structures around New York City for you to find the, the best opportunity to, to, to take part of. Gotcha. This question's from Peter. I'm a wholesale distributor. How do I handle if my customer goes directly to the manufacturer? How do I handle sales to this customer? How do you handle sales to the customer if they bypass you and go directly to the distributor? Yeah, they want to know how to handle a customer if they try to go past you. Okay, that could be that could be a conversation unto itself. That's a different topic altogether. We can deal okay. with that. Maybe topic all you know, new topic. Yeah, let's leave that one for follow up with Andrew, and Andrew can kind of pick the best yeah. place for that one to land. Yeah. I mean, my, my sense is you also want to kind of look at what the contractual obligations are. There may be some legal issues there as well that are outside of the marketing and sales world. But uh, yeah, feel free to email us and we'll see how or whether we can help. If I can right. just jump in for a quick second, um, Harvey and Renee have both indicated they're able and willing to stick around for a few extra minutes. And I appreciate their time flexibility. I do want to 
um, recognize uh, that it is four and we were intending to sort of end now. There's a lot of media information here and I think we're gonna stick around for a bit longer, but for those of you that do need to peel off now, I just wanted to thank you uh, for attending and obviously thank you Harvey for presenting and Renee as always for a uh, fabulous job um, co-hosting with us. Um, so for those of you that do have any follow-up questions, I did put the chat, uh, email into the chat. It's SBDC, that's Small Business Development Center, sbdc at pace.edu. That would be the email address to follow up with us if you have any uh, individual follow-up questions. Uh, but I have not seen a lot of folks sign off. So I guess if you are able and willing to stick around for a bit longer, um, thank you again, Harvey and Renee, for sticking around. And we'll keep at it. Thanks, everybody. Sure. Absolutely. And if folks do need to jump off, as I mentioned, you will get the recording. So you can keep an eye out for that. And if your question wasn't answered, you can email Andrew. You can reply to the GoToWebinar email to do that. He's also put it in the chat for you if you need to check that out. We had a question in from Chris. If your prospect doesn't answer, should you leave a voicemail or wait until you can speak to them? You should leave a voicemail. And the voicemail should, should be do the same, same as the beginning, stating what your um, purpose of your call is, but with your uh, lemonade statement, who you are, and ask them for 10 seconds of their time, tell you why you're calling. Make it short and sweet. Sounds and good. Sure to, be sure to repeat your voicemail, your uh, phone number a couple times. Oh, sounds good. Uh, your new mentee says Tuesday at four. Uh, Amy says, what is the best digital presence for a small business? I don't know if you want to answer that one or if it's something Andrew's crew would want to tackle. Tell me that again. What was the question? What is the best digital presence for your small business? I think that's a question we defer to Andrew. Yeah, I think that would depend in part who your customer is, who you're trying to reach and what kind of business venture you're in. Uh, we're happy to dive more deeply into that. Um, again, just email that email address. Let us know that's a question you want to explore further and we'll be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one session with a business advisor um, to go through those marketing questions and uh, and those in particular. And I guess, again, those services are offered at no cost. Sounds good. Andrew, for the, um, there's a few more folks that wanted feedback on the USPs. Is that a good one to go through you Absolutely. in your office to sit down yeah. and schedule a meeting I think for? It's, it, it's a really important skill. Harvey's really, uh, Kind of you know struck a chord i think and you know hopefully you folks are kind of figuring out how to kind of utilize this and then build this into how you can best define your business there are lots of opportunities um for this you know obviously uh, there's one or more mentions also of uh pitches there are a number of uh you know uh, competitions that come up you know where you can kind of be able to uh, practice and kind of get uh cash rewards if, if you do uh place well um, but that's not really why you do them. It's really an opportunity to kind of improve at it. But of course, yeah, we're, our business advisors have uh, worked with a number of folks on kind of helping them uh, hone that and kind of more effectively uh, present it in those regards. So long answer is yes. Thank you, and I appreciate that. There's quite a few folks that did reach out for feedback, so I'm so sorry we, we're not gonna be able to get to it on this, but it probably makes more sense for you to sit down with someone to go through that. Um, question in from Brianna. If you need to network, but you are the one that needs the help, like a manufacturer or supplier, then do you approach the networking in the same way for when you are selling your product to the everyday man? I'm not, you mean you're going to the networking group asking for help? You're the one that needs help. Like you're a manufacturer or supplier. You're going to the networking group and you're saying, I'm here to need help, right? Okay. Most of these networking groups, when you, let's say you go to a BNI networking meeting and you make your introduction, you state who you are, you can, you can end your conversation by one of two statements. One, we're looking for leads in this area for myself, or you're looking for help. And if there are other people around the table who can offer you help or know who can help you, they will volunteer that information to you. That's the advantage of these networking groups. Thank you. How do you most politely say no thank you to someone eager to have a meeting that you do not want as a client? How do you say no thank you to someone who wants to have a meeting with you and you don't want to have it? Yeah, you well, are not wanting them as a client. 
you don't want them as a client, but they want your help? Is that the question? They want to schedule a meeting with you, but you don't want to work with them. But you don't want to work with them. That's an interesting question. Um, I don't know. You could, you could simply, you know, if it's happening, you, for, I've been in situations where I fired clients and you just <laughs> give up clients and you say, come on, you're just too needy and you're not focusing on what kind of advice you're getting. And I would get frustrated and then end up saying, I don't, you know, let's, let's just terminate our relationship. Um, or if, if a person, if you have a prospect that really needs your help and you don't want to serve them, why don't you dig a little bit further and find out exactly what kind of help they need? Maybe you'll have some comfort and you'll enjoy some aspect of what kind of help they need. So you can turn you can turn a bad situation to a good session just by asking questions. What do you mean by that? How would you solve it? What situation would you do before? Perfect. Um, I think I asked all of the questions. We had um, a follow-up for the email address, which I replied to. It's sbdc at pace.edu. Um, and then what else was on here that maybe I skipped through? Um, Larry asked for the links. I'm not, I'm not totally sure which links Larry wanted. I'm wondering um, if they're in the chat, though. Larry, if you can't find those, just reply to the GoToWebinar email, and we will get you the links that you are looking for. I think that was the last question. We had lots of thank yous and very helpful. Okay, that's great. I'm glad I was helpful for you. You have a great day, make lots of money. And if <laughs> you need help, just reach out to Andrew. He's got the resources to find the help. We've got a bunch of professors at Pace who've got practical business experience in addition to being academically trained. They can help you solve your challenges. Andrew, I'll let you have any last words. Uh, just to thank you again for everybody for taking the time this afternoon. Hope you uh, gain some nuggets to help you improve uh, your businesses and uh, look forward to the opportunity to working with you here at the Small Business Development Center. And again, thank you, Harvey. Thank you, Renee. And I uh, hope you all have a great rest of the afternoon. You too. Okay. Take care. Thank See you. you.